Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm going to be bringing you a very belated book haul. What I'm going to be doing today is talking about nearly all of the books that I have bought in the past two years hiatus. Specifically going to be talking about non-fiction books that I've bought that I haven't read yet. Um, so we have quite an epic list coming at us but I have been able to chip away at a lot of the stuff that I have bought over the past two years as well. So this isn't an exhaustive list of all of the um, sort of books that I bought, it's just the ones that I haven't got round to yet and therefore you are more likely to end up seeing a wrap up at some point on this channel. So. It's a huge spread, we've got a weird mix of things today, and uh, let's just jump in. The first one is Iconicon by John uh, Grinrod. This is a journey around landmarks, landmark buildings of contemporary Britain, and this was a little bit of a spare of the moment purchase. I'm not really one for architecture normally, but I was intrigued by the idea of doing a bit of a like whistle-stop tour of kind of British history specifically focused on landmarks, and I generally quite like history books which have a specific kind of hook or reason why I would be listening, looking at them. And I thought it'd be interesting to look at some more like modern history in it. So it's a bit of a beefy book, the writing is quite small. I genuinely don't know when I'm gonna to get to it. Like I say, not normally my cup of tea, but I am intrigued and uh, it's come quite highly recommended. A super spur of the moment book that I saw when I was like, perusing our local market that has like a, a second-hand book stall for incredibly cheap is And the Band Played On by Christopher Ward. This is the enthralling account of what happened after the Titanic sank and it follows two musicians who were on board with the Titanic. The reason why this one has been on my radar a little bit is there is a really amazing book about the HIV crisis which is called And the Band Played On but this one always appears when you search for that one so it was one that kind of had been vaguely on my radar Titanic is fascinating, it has held sort of national and international attention for absolute years, there have been so many things about it and with the very recent disaster connected to Titan this one really caught my eye and I was like it would be interesting to read about a different perspective from the Titanic sinking and I think the musical element of it will be really interesting. The next two are also from that same bookstall where I just kind of grab stuff a bit spare at the moment. So we have France, a history from Gaul to de Gaulle, which is John Julius Norwich. Yeah, Norwich, Norwich. Interesting pronunciation there. Bear with me. It's been a while since I filmed, okay? Um, and this is just a history of France. I know not that much about French history. I know a little bit about some of the revolutions, stuff I've picked up from classics and from podcasts here or there. I would really like to expand my bookshelves and read a little bit more of history from other countries. I have a book on Italian history on my shelf that I still haven't got around to, so why not add a book on French history that's going to take me ages to get to it. And then one that I think was fairly iconic when it came out is The Witches, Salem from 1692 A History, which is Stacey Schiff. I really like reading about the witch trials. I read a really good book called Witches by Tracy Borman, which I would 100% recommend. That one was about um, the witch trials in the UK, connected with James the First, I think, whereas this is gonna be more about American witch trials, of which I'd know less about. So I thought it'd be interesting to read about the same kind of cultural phenomena and historical phenomena, but from a different um, like geographic location and a different way of coming to it. It's a bit chunkier than I was fully expecting it to be and the writing is quite small but hopefully it will flow really nicely and my general background knowledge will help it to move at a bit more of a pace. I also have some audiobooks that I've bought. Um, so I have Strong Female Character by Fern Brady. This is a bit of a departure of a lot of my normal reading. This is an autobiography from a celebrity which is not normally my scene but Fern Brady is a really hilarious uh, Scottish comic. I think her stuff is fantastic and she also talks about what it's like being a comedian and having autism so I thought it'd be quite interesting and she narrates it herself and her Scottish brogue is beautiful so I thought all in all she's funny normally. I think this will read like a like I've heard generally very positive things and I think it will work really well in audiobook. I also picked up one of these like audible, audible sales where you know you're kind of looking for a two for one and you're not too sure so you kind of take a bit of a punt on a book. So I have Etta Lemon, The Book Who Saved the Birds by uh, Tessa Bose, I think is how we're going for that one. This is about the woman who actually ended up her conservation work for birds ended up being the foundation of the RSPB, which is very interesting. And there was a period of time where um, women would wear lots of very exotic feathers in their hats and it was causing a basically mass extinction event occurring in sort of various um, birds of paradise. Something I learned a lot about in the book, The Feather Thief that I will link down below that I read a while ago. So I think it will be fun to come to a topic that I'm somewhat familiar with, but look at it from a different 
viewpoint um, which is again sort of the vibe with a lot of these books and uh, yeah I'm intrigued it was one of these little deals and I haven't heard anybody talk about it but I also haven't heard anybody talk about really anything for a while because I've been entirely on a hiatus for two years so if you've read Etta Lemon and you think it's worth it and you've heard any hype about it let me know in the comments because I know nothing at the moment. One that is on my September TBR that I'm hopefully going to be get to fairly soon is uh, Elementary by John W. Russell. I think it'll be here somewhere. Um, this is a short book which is about the periodic table. I attempted to read The Disappearing Spoon which is like the pop science book for the periodic table a good couple of years ago now. I want to say like 2018 really didn't get on with it, didn't like the writing style, so it's nice to find an alternative. It's supposed to be quite short. My concern is that with it being so short, it's not gonna go into the detail I want about the periodic table, but we're gonna give it a go, and if it sucks, it won't be too much lost time, um, and it might also give me the push to find a more in-depth book about the periodic table, because it's something that I know woefully little about for somebody who's very into science. Continuing on with uh, audiobooks that I have that I'm really interested in getting to, I have Bitch on the Female of the Species by Lucy Cook. This is a nature writing book that is looking at females of the species as the name suggests. I know very little about this one other than I know that this one has been super hyped and I couldn't get away from hype even not really being on booktube for a while. Um, it's been popping up on like my Instagram feed, it's been heavily promoted in every bookstore I've got into and I am so into reading nature books. I've been reading so many sciencey biology books. You can have a bunch of recommendation videos coming from me for the stuff that I've been reading the past few years so this is a real no-brainer natural winner for me and I'm really excited to get to it but I might actually buy the physical copy as well because I'm finding sometimes the science books don't translate very nicely to audiobook if there's a lot of technical detail so it's one that I might treat myself to the physical copy as well and we'll just kind of see how we go we might have to bounce between the two of them. The final audiobook I have is Otherland, A Journey Through Earth's Extinct Worlds by Thomas Halliday. I've had this on my TBR for nearly the full two years that I've been away. I quite foolishly got it just as the course started and then immediately didn't have the mental headspace for it. Um, but basically this is just another really great prehistoric book that is out there. I've read quite a few different books on various different time periods within prehistory. Paleontology is so my jam. Like if you've been around for a while, you know I am so into dinosaurs, it's unbelievable. This one is gonna be going back further in time. It looks at like 16 different specific archeological sites and paleontological sites and like what they can tell us about different particular time periods. So I'm always interested in one that goes beyond just your classic Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous. Um, and it's been a really long time since I read anything that was like true super paleontology going back really far so i am very psyched to get to this and this is another one where i might just get the physical copy as well just to kind of enjoy the different formats and to help when it comes to recognizing the words written down as well as knowing how they're pronounced because again sometimes audiobook and science don't really gel very well now we do have a couple more physical books there's still more like i said i really went all out so sticking with our sciencey naturey kind of books we have Below the Edge of Darkness by Dr. Edith Widder, and this is exploring light and life in the deep sea. Um, it really does what it says on the tin, it's looking at deep sea life. I think that the ocean is terrifying and awesome in equal measure. I have been smashing through podcasts about like sharks and dolphins and whales and all sorts of weird stuff like that. So I'm really psyched to see what's going on down in the deep trenches beyond just our classic anglerfish and how weird things can really get down there. Another science book that I have that I'm psyched for is The Man Who Tasted Words, Inside the Strange and Startling World of Our Senses by Professor Guy Leishnitzner. I feel like I screwed that up. I'm very sorry. Um, I really haven't got back into the habit of looking up surnames and I should do that if I'm going to be filming. So this is looking at synesthesia, which is where our senses can end up crossing and just kind of looking at each of the individual senses in turn, how they've developed, what they can tell us about the world. I read a book like a decade ago if not more now called the frog who croaked blue which is about synesthesia which is where your senses get crossed and people can like hear colors or taste words or things like that um, and it was one of the first pop science books that i read that really introduced me to it as an area that i really enjoy so i was super excited to see that there's like another book on senses that's far more up to date um that isn't specifically necessarily about synesthesia but just about the senses in general because they are wild and wacky and weird and yes i know that there is the ed young book 
an immense world that is all about animal senses that everyone's raving about. I don't have my hands on a copy yet. I'm not allowed to buy another non-fiction book until I've chipped away at some of these. Don't tell me to read it. I know it's incredible. I can't wait. I loved his other book. I will buy it at some point. It will be in a book haul soon. Just not yet. We have to think of our bank balance team and our TBRs. They cannot just perpetually grow forever. Going on a bit of a different slot now, we have The Vampire, A New History by Nick Groom. Um, it's about, it's a book about vampires, like, just the history of vampires. I'm here for it. I think vampires are awesome. Um, I'm fascinated by their place in culture. It's insanely small font for what the subject matter is. I think this is going to be a surprisingly dense and difficult book, but I can't wait. And it covers, like, Edward Cullen and goes, like, fully modern day vampire and sort of the revamping that vampires have had pun not intended there. I don't know if that counts as a pun or not. So yeah, excited about this, but no idea. Any of the books that have tiny font are terrifying. A book that I bought, again, like at the very beginning of the course, cannot believe I haven't got to it yet on my bookshelf, is The Remarkable Life Skin, An Intimate Journey Across Our Surface by Monty Lyman. I read his other book that came out in very quick succession, which is The Painful Truth, and I will be doing a mini review on it in some of the science-y review books I'm gonna be doing soon. I've been devouring a lot of pop science books as a way to supplement my learning and to give my brain like a bit of a break but not fully with the course and this is kind of a book that's left over from some of that really intense science writing buying that I was doing. Um, it's a book about skin, his other one was really good, I'm excited to read it. I bought it when we were learning about skin at the time and then just didn't quite get to it before the course moved on, um, so eventually I'll read it. And then the final book is actually one that my dad has given me and this is River Kings by Kat Jarman. This is the Vikings from Scandinavia to the Silk Roads and it's just a, a sort of look at the Vikings and some of our misconceptions of them and how they were so heavily involved in international trade at the time. And we very much view like international trade as a very modern thing, sort of the amount of international travel we have. Whereas, you know, there was a lot of trading going on from an incredibly early time in our history. And the Vikings were a really fundamental part of that. My dad raves about this book. He said it was such a good read. It had been on my radar for a little while. So of course I said, yes, I'll totally take it off your hands. I haven't got to it yet. Like I say, I haven't read anything history in a while, but I'm super excited by it. And I read a book that was called literally The Vikings by I think Thomas Britton might have been his name, but like it was one of the kind of quintessential Viking books. So I'm really intrigued to place the information that I got from that in a wider sort of international context that this book will hopefully provide. And uh, that's pretty much it. So which one of these are you most excited for me to get to? What do you think I should prioritise? Have you read any of them and you're like, nah, that is not worth the time. Tiny font, don't do it to yourself. Um, so yeah, it's been a long couple of years of collecting some books and uh, I'm super excited to get to them. My non-fiction shelves have grown and grown and grown as I've just had to focus so in on one particular area because of the fact that I've been studying but I am such a polymath at heart and desperately miss reading from other areas so don't worry you're gonna be seeing tons of not fictional wrap-ups fairly soon and I'm sure I'm gonna get to some of these as well as the mountain of non-fiction that I still have that is left over from pre-hiatus. Um, so have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!